Fredsters, I suppose. God, I've known you for a long time now, haven't I? Well, it has been quite a long time, yeah. How long is um, that? Well, at least, I mean... Do you remember? 2006 is when you went, was the year you got me into racing. I do. Yeah, this is all thanks, <laughs> to, all thanks to you. My claim to fame. <laughs> Something I always wanted to know, it was a Maserati. It was, it was, it was, it was a GT4. in the Trofeo, yeah. So was, were you racing that? I racing? was racing in the Trofeo and I saw you there because before that I knew you, but you were you were much more into horses. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. You, you wanted to, to well, play. I arrived at that event with absolutely no idea. Anything new, I knew nothing about racing completely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I bumped into Andrea the night before. It's funny that it was the day that that Friday that I decided to sell the horses, what was left of them, try and get a job playing for another team because I had no more money, no, yeah. no horses. So for everyone that didn't know that you wanted to be a polo player. Yeah. And so you kind of had, you. when did you first get on a horse? Because that was your real love as a question, isn't it? Oh, I started the horses, you know. Really young? Yeah, yeah, baby, 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 yeah, yeah. And then, yeah. and then you got, what, what handicap in, in, in uh, polo Only one, so I didn't actually start polo until I was 14, 15, really. Yeah. And then stopped when I was 18, so I went from minus two to one um, in, in three years. And Which is very well, good. Yeah. That's well, really hard I mean. for anyone that doesn't know. Um, but you had, as, as a youngster, you had no, obviously coming from such a, you know, a, a, a prestigious kind of racing family name. You had no kind of dreams of kind of following what your dad did or? No, only because I knew so little about it. I mean, had I, you know, gone and done some proper kart races or been to some racing events, maybe, you know, I would have been, been yeah. become interested. Yeah. But I never saw it, so I was never given the opportunity to be interested. I mean, and why I, was that? Just because he was, he was, you know, well, obviously what happened, but I didn't know how old you were. I was only six. You yeah, were yeah, six, yeah, well, okay, almost so six. Baby, it was just yeah. for my sixth birthday, yeah. Oh, um, I, re I remember Uncle Dave, Dad's little brother, sort of suggesting it every, occasionally, every now and again, go, do you guys want to try karting? But I didn't really know why. You never did it. Um, but you did go to, you remember as a little little boy going to a few races? Some and vague, like that? vague memories, yeah. mostly of the Marlborough Hospitality bus. Um, yeah, that. I remember cool. a uh, hospitality area at Silverstone with a white picket fence around it. Um, but that's, yeah, yeah so I, was, I was really young. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so that was possibly why. So I know that your mum was right at the edge of one of the most famous um, polo places in the whole of the UK, which is Cowdery. Yeah. And is yeah. that is that that's why you automatically well, kind of went into horses? No, because we, we didn't actually move down there to, well, move to Midhurst until I was were you a bit older? Were you were yeah. still in London, weren't you? Um, we were in London until I was yeah. about four or something. But no, I, I, I think I got, when I was about 13 or 14, I was, we were doing, you know, I was up until then, I was doing, you know, eventing and yeah. show jumping and what have you. And I kind of said, yeah. said to mum, sorry, I'm getting a bit bored of this. Uh, well, it's <laughs> it's a, not it's, competitive enough. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and then she said, well, do you want to try polo? And I did, and I absolutely loved it. I mean, yeah, it really amazing. is. I watched the high goal match on, on, on the weekend, seeing the, the um, uh, the father and son. No, and well, we saw uh, what's his name, uh, Cambiasso and his Cambiasso. son playing together. Yes. And um, it really is one of the greatest sports of all. It, it really is. It re well, I yes, unless you're on a bit of tarmac. Which yeah, I, think I said you one, one of the greatest sports <laughs> of all. I just like two sports combined into one. Yeah, it um, is. Full contact sport and the skill of those, those real top players is just phenomenal. It, it is, it is. And so then it comes to. So we saw each other. Did we see each other in Argentina? I think we did briefly, didn't we? I think we? briefly, yeah. 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 Um, and then I got, I was into racing at the time and I saw you at Goodwood and I was like, you need to get in this car, didn't I? Yeah, well, it's, it's all <laughs> thanks to you that it all started really, yeah. Um, oh, I and can't unbeknown to Goodwood, I remember I was in your, in your suit and, and helmet. Yeah, you were in my, and didn't have a race license. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'd, only have, I'd only had my driving license for weeks, for yeah. a few weeks, and then got into that Maserati with what, 400 That's my and race car <laughs> and sent you up the hill. Yeah. <laughs> For the Maserati guy sitting next to me, probably crapping himself, yeah, I know, thinking, going, God, oh, if this goes wrong, I'm in serious trouble. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then that was where you did that, oh, I really like this. Yeah, yeah. And it was Andrea that um, yeah. that encouraged me. He said, look, Fred, you're, you're not a bad polo player, but you've got no money and no horses. So, yeah, um, yeah, that, it name, helps. If you like, if you like racing, if you're good at it, you could make a career out of it. And he was right. Yeah. It's taken me quite a while to get there, but <laughs> at least now I've got a... You know, I've got a team and... and, and so, uh, so where did, after that, 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 you know, that first drive, where, how did you go? You said, right, that's it. And you started, did you start contacting kind of was, people saying, I really want to get into racing? Uncle Dave was my first, first Uncle call. Uncle Dave, yeah. Um, I told him, you know, I want to 
on a racing driver, I think. What do I do? An Uncle Dave to is, all is of the... Dad's little brother. So he raced yeah. up and so he got up to Formula, uh, Formula 3000. I think he did some testing for Benetton in Formula 1. Yeah. But never actually raced in Formula 1. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I rang him up and he said, you know, ring me back in a week if he's still serious. <laughs> Yep. And, and he so, did. So, so I did. Yeah. And then British Formula Four Championship was the first season. And somehow I managed to scrape together some quite, funding. Quite big to get into your first race. And Unbeknown to me, yeah. Well, yeah. and all of us, it was extremely competitive. Most, most, most races. Yes. Top ten were split by two tenths or so. Oh, jeez. Um, so it was very tight. And I was actually, I was quick in testing, in you know, private testing when no one was watching. But then I developed a horrible mental problem. I put a lot of pressure on myself. Anxiety. Anxiety and, yeah. and you know, my, my mental state wasn't great. I just yeah. didn't, I didn't know how to handle pressure or how, how to handle cameras. A lot cameras of people cause... would be looking at you going, oh, it's James Hunt's son. He must be really quick. He must be all this. And you had a lot of eyes on you. Yeah. And particularly because yeah. I knew I was quick and, and, and word got around the paddock that I was quick. Yeah. But then it came to the race meeting. I did. And pressure, you know, even just yeah. just 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 the, the the official practice on the Friday. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll be terrible. You know, be yeah, two yeah, seconds slower yeah. than my Get own pace, nerves. spinning and crashing. Yeah. When I was always top six pace. Yeah. Which was, and it got worse and worse and worse. Snowballed yeah. until mid two thousand and nine. That's when I thought I, I can't do this anymore. And, really. Uh, and I stopped. Right. So I stopped driving, and then I didn't come back. I did a couple of one-off drives in the meantime. In the interim, I actually did quite well because I didn't consider myself professional. Therefore, Stepped didn't away put, from it. Didn't put yeah. the pressure on myself. I was yeah. like, and did okay in those races. And yeah. then 2014 came back, but then lost mum that year. I know, so that, I'm se so sorry. that season was a mess. Yeah. Um, and uh, but then, and then since then, it's pretty much been just one-off drives here and there up yeah. until this year. Yeah. Where I've now got a now got a, t a good team, a really good team behind me. I know. Um, and uh, we had our first podium. I mean, considering the team haven't yes haven't. Um, racing these cars before. I mean, they're experienced endurance racers and GTs. Okay. But they've never done prototypes before. So my teammates brand new to them. The engineers brand new to them. Right. You know, never even looked at, you know, to, to set up one of these. And they are very uh, yes. complicated cars. Yes. Um, and this is the team, the right writer. Writer engineering, yeah, writer. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they've, you know, they've taken a big risk on me, taking me on, mm -hmm. which is, which is, you know, absolutely great. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we had our first, had a, I mean, the first race we finished eleventh. Second race we we crossed the line in in fifth, uh, got promoted to fourth. That's but we, we had, after leading the race, but then we had a penalty and got put down to sixteenth, mm. unfortunately. But then in, yeah. in, in Le Mans we led led the race and finished fifth in that one. Then second race Brilliant. we led led with leading as well and then and finished uh, um, finished second. Thanks to the bloody pointless safety car, so we had a twenty five second lead. And they brought oh. the safety car out and bunched them up. And my yeah. teammate, bless him, I mean, he was—he did a hell of a job to fight off the, the other cars. Yes. Um, because they are some you know, world-class top pros. Yeah, exactly. But, um, so, yeah. I know, I, th uh, I think that happened to someone else and leading some other championship, maybe, yes. as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, so this is fantastic. So I've heard you've just done a five-year contract with them? Five-year right? contract, yeah. Congratulations, yeah. that's fantastic. And I suppose, you know, what, what's the kind of the dream with writer? Where do you want to go in that five years? So our plan is, my, my, my dream is to, is to win Le Mans, but in, in five years time, 2026 is the 50th anniversary of Dad's World Championship. So it's the, the, uh, the icing on the cake will be able to do it on that year. Oh my um, so goodness. So that's the plan, so. Oh, it's giving me goosebumps. <laughs> It has to happen. It has I'm, to I'm, happen. I'm, I'm, it will it, happen. I'm, I'm getting more and more confident since the yeah. last, since our success at the Mon, considering how new we are to yeah. this, to how new the team is. Yeah. I'm having more and more confidence. So, yeah, um, exactly. And the, you're, d d are you getting it kind of like, um, you know, like coaches and everything to help with the pressure and help to kind of harness all of those, all that adrenaline into the right area rather than yeah i mean me wrong area. Me mentally i mean i, I work with a th i work with a therapist um, yeah um, fantastic to, you know, to help with the men mental side of things yeah i'm doing a lot more work on the simulator now as well i'm not yeah, sure i really don't like it but it's necessary though. i mean certainly for learning new tracks is really good yes they um, are. so yeah i know lots lots of training that's what we are doing some more more testing yeah uh unfortunately we missed all the pre-season testing because we, we got you snow snowed off um why? Well, uh, we had, I mean, obviously we had two, snow, two, but day, where, two days booked at um, uh, Nürburgring. It was cancelled the day before because of the weather. The, yeah. And then another day we had, we had booked, uh, was um, too, much, too many team members had COVID. So, oh, yeah. God, so yes. So we didn't have, Not we, the best we, we start. turned up at Port Ricard. And um, kind of going, oh. And with a recommended <laughs> setup from, from the 
car manufacturer and I'm, I think they must have got the numbers back to front or something because the car was completely undrivable. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So really good start to the season. How many more races left? Uh, three, three races three left of the championship. Left. So Monza, which I fly out tomorrow morning. I love Monza. Monza this weekend. Yep. Um, hopefully that'll be good. I drove there last year and I was reasonably quick. So It's amazing. It's my favorite. It's a seriously quick track. Yeah, it is a good track. Yeah. It is a good track. The, Very... the last sector is great. Oh, great it's fun. amazing. Okay, so Monza. Uh, and then Spa, which I've never driven, I've always wanted to, which is great. Also one of my other faves. Um, I can't wait to go there, really. It's a bit that, of I mean. everything. You know, you can have one side of the track and be damp still because you've got the trees and then you've got, yeah, so, it, so it takes a real a real uh, test of driving ability. Mm. It'll be fun. You'll no, love really it. I'm really looking forward to it. Luckily, I've done, I've done quite a lot of sim work there, yeah. so I know the track yeah. well in terms of, or as well as one can without actually having driven there. And then the uh, the finale is at Port is Portimao, which I have raced there, and I've done quite a bit of testing there before, so I know that track well. Okay, so this Admitting is not for a while, but anyway. Okay, so the first year you'll be you'll be pretty pleased with the start so far. So so next year you're gonna I'm not gonna sure. aim for the championship. Yeah, I mean it's not it's not yes. actually impossible to win it this year. We're we're eighth in the championship now. We're only five points off third. God, uh, that's and brilliant. if the you know, if the front two if if we have podium finishes for the next two races. You and the front two, the and the front two have a couple of DNS. Then you know, it's not, it's not. I you mean, it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But it's so, motor racing. But next year, whether we'll do the same championship or we'll move to ELMS. Um, right. Can you explain we'll, the difference between so, what you're racing at the moment and ELMS? E yeah, Michelin. L Le yeah. Sorry. ELMS is the European e Le Mans series. <laughs> I got it. That's a three-man team, four-hour races. Right. Uh, whereas the Michelin Le Mans Cup now is You're two in. men team with one that we're, and they're one hour, 50 minute races. Okay. Um, and ELMS also has LMP2 in it as well. Yes. So here we just have LMP3 and, GT, and GT3. So it's more competitive. Well, not this year actually, because the rules changed in ELMS last year. Yeah. Um, at the end of last year, mm -hmm. um, you could have a gold, a silver and a bronze. Yeah. Now, if you have a gold, you have to have two bronzes. So most of the teams have gone for a bronze and two silvers. Uh -huh. And therefore, a lot of the golds have left LMS and come into Le Mans Cup. So our oh, qualifying I golds, it. I think, maybe not every track, okay, they've been quicker. Even quicker. So, so oh, wow. it's actually a lot more competitive for the okay. Le Mans Cup okay. this year than the LMS. Right. Um, Interesting. They might change those rules back because of that. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd prefer, I would like to go into the LMS, but it's a question of you know, budget. This, you know, because it's more, more, more mileage, yeah. there's more money. Yeah. Um, but hopefully we can go into LMS and yeah, we'd nice to go into LMP2 as well. Yeah, that would um, be great. But also we don't know if LMP2 is going to last now with the LMDH, you know, in certainly in the World Endurance Championship. But that's the next step. Yeah. Um, now the manufacturers making these the LMDH cars and um, yeah, the hyper cars. The girls. See, oh, the yeah, apple never friend. falls she's far friend, from the tree, does it? <laughs> 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 Where there's, were there's you? only yeah, you... there's, yeah there's only 60 places on the grid on in in, in Le Mans so if you've yes, got 30 yeah. 30 GTs and 30 LMDH cars there's no place for LMP2s yeah and the organizers saying that's not going to happen but it's it's it, it, we, no one knows but I would like to be in LMP2 but if yeah. there's if there's no future for LMP2 then there's, there's then no there's no point doing yeah, it yeah so and then who's your co-driver my co-driver is Matt Sillyhow. Yes. He is a Norwegian guy. Yeah. Really lovely guy. Yeah. Um, good energy about him. Perfect. Talented driver, so it's, it's ideal. And good um, to travel everywhere, good to bounce off and... Yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, you know, ju just what I... I mean, his, his sort of... Uh, his attitude and his energy is, is you know, complements mine perfectly. Brilliant. So, really lucky there as well. It's, it's sort of... Yeah, you need that. You need that, especially when you've got that pressure and you're doing, you know, very competitive series and you're away from home and it's it's good to have a friend as your as your kind of teammate. Mm. Um, and can you tell us really briefly about, you've just done a movie, right? Yes. Sons of Speed. Yeah, Sons of Speed. So it's what started years ago. Yeah. Um, back in 2014 when we did the MRF and it's about Matthias Slaudder and, and myself racing against one another. Yeah. Um, but we, we, there, we didn't quite have enough footage to finish the movie, but we, so we, it was, we did another race last year mm -hmm. at Donington in, mm -hmm. the, in a revolution and to, to finish off the movie. And it's, yeah. um, I can't say much no, more than that, say, I don't want to ruin it, but the, 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 trailer is, <laughs> the trailer is out and um, you know, hopefully it should be released within the next few months. And it, I suppose it's kind of like it is the Sons of Speed because you're kind of like 
part imitating the, it's got to the same of this this amazing uh, competition that Nicky Lauda had with your dad now it's gone down another generation to, to yeah. the boys racing it out head to head I mean naturally it isn't quite as fierce because we're not fighting for the world championship I know but we still both want to beat each other <laughs> down here of course of course oh brilliant so you had a lot of fun doing that yeah yeah, yeah. a lot of fun yeah um, and then today, can we a little bit touch on what we're doing today? So you, you've invited us up to a, a really special event, which is Go-Kart. This is the track that we've been going around. Yep. Um, and we're raising money for Ukraine. Yep. And Ukraine we're going, refugees. yes. So tell us a little bit more about, about that event. Well, it, the, the whole idea was initiated by, by Joel Sayer, who's only a young, he's eight years old. Yes. Um, which is really, really <laughs> great. And they, 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 well, they got in touch with me saying, can you help out, you know, sort of help promote the event and everything. So, so I did. I thought it was yep. a wonderful thing. Um, and it was you know, a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to help yep. help the uh, the poor ref refugees because what cranky what they're going through is just, yeah. just so unbearable. Yeah. I mean, in this day and age, it's outrageous. I know. I know. It really is. Mm -hmm. So, it's so got, we've got 22, 22 odd teams? I think so, yeah. 22 teams you of up to six people per team. That's a lot. Um, so it's going to be a lot of drivers. You managed to twist our arms. We actually have a kid in the sweet shop team. Good. Yeah. Good. Which is very exciting. Um, and so, who who do we need to look out for? I mean, a pre you know yourself, not included. But who who do we need to beat? Who's the good team? Um, the team Amy, my girlfriend's father's driving in. I know there's, there's some quick drivers in there, and Amy, Amy, yeah. say Amy's father is a, is a you know ex professional racer as well. So, okay. But yeah. just the other teams, I know there are some teams with some with some good professional drivers in there, uh -oh. which will be quick, So, but I don't know how many, so. No pressure, kid in the sweet shop. <laughs> um, no, that's fantastic. So, so the aim is that 2026, 24 hour at Le Mans, that's, yeah. that's the goal. That, that's the plan, yeah, that's the goal. Oh, it'll just be absolutely awesome, I tell you. Well, we will definitely have to come, I know it's four years time, but I can promise you, if he's going to do it, we'll be following him with Kid in the Sweet Shop. But thank you so much for having a chat with us. And um, and we're really looking forward to, to, to thrashing you a bit later. Yeah, well, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cool.